I had this shoe with a review of the Zoom Freak 4. I uh, wasn't a big fan of the Zoom Freak series. I love the player, but the, the, the shoes, they weren't that great. The one was pretty interesting with the reverse swoosh and a double stack zoom air that you don't really feel, like a slight zoom air pod in a thick midsole. Didn't really feel it. Forefoot was not much there, just foam. And the two supposedly had zoom air on the forefoot, but you can't really feel it. On the heel, it was like rigid, hard, old thousand year old chewing gum kind of uh, rigidity in the heel. Uh, the three had double zoom pods like this, but you can really feel it. And the uh, the one on the lateral side was a little bit too flimsy and it kept giving you that instability uh, scare on the side. So what they did here is they actually brought the best of both worlds in terms of the lateral stability that the Zoom Freaks used to have. So even if this zoom pod is exposed and the outrigger is here, this thick swoosh midsole provides that uh, additional braking that you need when it terms when it comes to possible risks of spraining your ankle. So there's a nice uh, lateral stability there. The the best thing about this, which is quite revolutionary, but a very very simple solution they found in terms of uh, affordable cushioning without having to put in some expensive special high tech gimmick. If you look at inside the heel, the heel area is chopped up into blocks. So these separated blocks because they have more space to expand and individually they're softer than having just one chunk. The cushioning of the shock absorption is markedly better than anything that just has a foam on the heel. So among, even compared to the Zoom Freak ones which are double stack zoom, this has better heel cushioning. So the best heel cushioning you could have ever felt in the shoes that did not have any air sold on the on the heel. So. Yeah, this is a very simple but revolutionary thing that Nike did. The heel cushioning is awesome. And the forefoot zoom is, even though they're exposed, they're pretty low to the ground. So much so low to the ground that you can actually see them exposed here, the two pots. And the two pots work nicely in tandem without making you feel like they're two separate PSI zoom pots. They work nicely. And as I mentioned earlier, the, the lateral stability chunk on the midsole really does get the job done. Kind of like the KD uh, 14 is when the uh, the lateral stability chunk actually provide a good break, good anti inversion sprain mechanism there. Overall, the padding is uh, soft and nice all around, minimal but nice. It's got a little, um, I suppose, containment unit here on the on the Achilles heel without being pinching or intrusive. There's a heel cup there getting the job done, so there's no crazy heel slippage there. Uh, the tongue is uh, there, adequate padding there. And overall, the upper material is sort of like a mesh material with a, a thin inner piece, inner piece, inner layer, and a fuse coating around. Uh, it fits, I would say it fits true to size. If you have a very narrow foot and you want a very tight fit, you might want to go down half a size. Uh, this is wide foot friendly compared to the previous Zoom Freaks, which I always had to go up a whole size up. Uh, but there is some dead space on the toe box area, so that's something you might want to keep in mind and interestingly the cut is a little bit narrower on the big toe area so you have a uh, sensitivity towards s stuffiness around the big toe area you might want to give this to try and see if you need to go up a side or not but overall this is the roomiest widest fitting zoom freaks i've experienced compared to the previous three so that's good um yeah and the outsole pattern it's a more aggressive zigzag pattern from the one we've had from the Zoom Freak 3 and I thought Zoom Freak 3 had a very decent traction reminiscent of the Kobe 9s. Uh, this is a nice little alteration. Uh, can't really tell if it's an upgrade but it's not it's not a downgrade for sure. That's great. Um, and yeah the, the cushioning itself you feel it even without the insole and with the insole which is a pretty thick ortholite like material that feels more EVA like. So the density is there and the top coat is nice and carpety, so it's nice. So all in all, this shoe, I really don't find much to complain about except for a little weird dead space here in the toe box area, but I'm sure that's not a problem for most people. Um, and for a size nine and a half, it weighs about 365 grams and it feels as light, if not lighter than what the digits show. So that is really good. So the best Zoom Freak Personally, I think ever so far, um, they try to stay true to its uh, identity of being sort of a budget 
affordable signature shoe and just minor simple adjustments to provide that solution for the heel cushion that seemed to lack they seem to lack so much even when they had zoom air so the best cushioned the best fitting uh zoom freak so far and the design itself is pretty uh, revolutionary not just a boring reverse swoosh uh, not just a huge swoosh in the middle and not no ugly straps so i would say this is the best personally best zoom freak so far